SPC Elementary, welcome to worship. So we're going to start off today with prayer. So let's put our hands together and our eyes closed. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you so much for another amazing week, Lord. I just pray that um, everybody has been doing really well. Um, I just thank you for bringing us together so we can worship you with all our hearts, Lord. I just uh, pray that you bless us and keep us safe and um, bless this message that we're about to learn about. And name Jesus Christ, amen. So please stand for the Apostles' Creed. Ready, begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand for grace.
Good morning, GSPC boys and girls. Here we are again on Sunday to give you the message uh, for the worship. So let's start with prayer and then we'll move right ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this day for us to worship you and to praise you. We ask that you will help us to set aside all the thoughts and be able to focus on your word so that it may strengthen us to do good works for you and to help us to know, Father God, who we are, who you are, and what we need to do, and also to remind us where our home is. So as we listen, we ask that you will help us through the help of Holy Spirit who lives in us. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to be moving on to 1 Kings chapter 3. And the Bible verse for Sunday message is Matthew 7, 7. And I have my Bible right here with me. And I will read from there. It says, Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Okay, let's move on. In 1 Kings chapter 2, Solomon carries out the advice of David. Here we meet with execution after execution. And key characters are in the order of their elimination. Adonijah, who is Absalom's young, a young brother, is eliminated. Abiathar, um, pretty much the priest during time of David, he was sent home never to step into Jerusalem or anywhere else. Meaning, not only Jerusalem, but he also could not step into the synagogue um, or tabernacle to perform his duty as um, God's representative. Joab, the commander, is eliminated. Shemai, the Benjamite, is also eliminated. One by one, they all caused their own coming death by disrespecting Solomon's command and his kingship. Solomon, in his good time, carried out their executions as David had advised. So Solomon just did not carry it out right away. He gave them warning. He commanded them what they should do. But all three of them disrespected Solomon's command and his role as a king and went about their own way and their own plans. And so therefore, in good time, Solomon had one by one eliminated them. The kingdom must be safeguarded from those trying to destroy and to weaken it. It must be protected. You can't have your enemies in your kingdom. Boys and girls, this statement reminds of me of the last day of second coming of Jesus. We're all waiting for his kingdom to come. It is stated in Matthew 13, 40 and 43 through 43, 2 Thessalonians 1, 9, 10. It says, So it will be at the end of the age, the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. So we need to keep this in mind. Just because um, God is quiet doesn't mean he is not watching. But there will come a day when God has to take out his enemies. Right now in this world, we are living with his enemies. That's why the battle is severe and that we have to put on the armor of God. It is total mistake if we think, oh, you know, there is no enemy. No, there is enemy. There's Satan. There's this world who's got their own values. And we also have sinful nature in us that we have to battle against. So that's a quite a bit of elements that we need to battle. So therefore, we need to battle well and victoriously. So keep in mind that there is hell 
as I have shown you in the picture. And there is heaven. A lot of times we forget that there is heaven, but we forget that there is hell. So therefore, let's not wait until the last minute, but let us faithfully serve the Lord because God's book, all 66 books, have uh, foreshadowed what is to come. So our only safety then is to give and to surrender ourselves to the monarchy of Jesus. That's the only way. He is the way, the life, and the truth. And this is the road that we must be on. How do you surrender to Jesus' monarchy, his kingdom? In Romans 3.23, he says, For all have sinned. The sin is in our hearts, and it separates us from God who is without sin. In Romans 5.8, he shares with us, but God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us on the cross. And in John 1.12, it states, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And in Hebrew 13.5b, it says, I will ne never leave you or forsake you. So this is how we surrender to Jesus' kingdom, Jesus' monarchy, his lordship, and his um, reign. So the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon now that there is no enemy to weaken it. And the Lord loved him, and Solomon loved the Lord. He followed all the instructions and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings to God. That night, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Boys and girls, just as God asked Solomon, He asks you and me, What shall I give you? Even though we are not kings or queens, and we may not have same big responsibility as Solomon had? Our God is saying God, a generous God who wants to lavish his blessings upon you. Solomon knew what he lacked and he asked God. When he asked God for our uh, when we ask God for our needs, God responds with this answer to your prayer. All these things shall be added unto you. Solomon begins his prayer with praise with God's faithfulness to him. He thanks God for keeping promise to his father David. And he even goes way back to thank God for keeping promise by mentioning about too many to be numbered or counted for multitude, which is in time of Abraham where God promised that your descendant will be numerous as the stars and the sand in the sea. And this is mentioned again by Solomon. So he goes back far to give thanks. And Solomon declares that God had done it. Old promises, new promises. God, Yahweh, had done it. Solomon replied this, he said, God, I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am among your own chosen people, a nation so great they are too numerous to count. Solomon asks, give me an understanding mind, wisdom, to govern your people that I may discern means judge between good and evil. He was not concerned about his success as a king, but thought about how he may most help the people of God. Boys and girls, you may not be a king or queen, but you have others who look to you for your guidance and help. Therefore, your prayers should be for their good, not what we want, what we need. That could come at last, but our primary request should be for others. God was very pleased with Solomon's request. God was so delighted with his request that God said, I am giving you a wise and discerning mind. 
There will not be anyone like you before or after you. Not only that, I will give you what you have not asked, both wealth and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And God added, If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings, peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Here is the proof that God really gave King Solomon wisdom and good judgment. Sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. There were two women living in the same house, and they both had a baby three days apart. Woman said, her baby died during the night when she rolled over on him. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside hers. And in the morning when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was your son. The living child is mine. She was denying. Solomon reviewed the story again, the two women, with the two women, just to make sure he has the story correct. Then Solomon called for a sword and ordered the living infant to be cut in two. This order so shocked the real mother that she cried out, Oh no, my lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, He will be neither yours or not mine. Divide him between us. Then Solomon said, Do not kill him, but give the baby to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. The nation of Israel was impressed. Then all Israel heard the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared before the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice. Solomon's wisdom, judgment, and justice, guess what? They all point to one, and that is Jesus Christ, who is infinitely so outweighs greater than Solomon. We give glory and honor to our God's son, Jesus, who rules and reigns with his highest and best wisdom, judgment, and justice, always interceding for our best. And this is our King who reigns, who oversees, who protects us. He's got the highest and the best wisdom, judgment, justice for your good. So boys and girls, Let's uh, look into the question that we are going to review on Thursday at Zoom. Here we go. Why does the one's kingdom need to be safeguarded? Two, what will God do on the last day to keep his kingdom holy? Who first loved you, God or you? If you need any clue, look into Roman. 5, 8. Why do you think God first loved us? How did God show he loved Solomon? How did Solomon show he loved God? How did Solomon start his prayer? 7. What was Solomon's prayer request? Why was this request so delightful in God's sight? How did God answer Solomon? What is the proof that God answered Solomon's prayer? 
So boys and girls, those are the questions that you are going to review and to um, be ready for on Thursday. Okay, let's go ahead and end in prayer. Reminding God how um, wonderful he is, that we are glad that he is our king because he's got the highest wisdom, judgment, and discernment to make sure that our needs are met, that our battles are fought well. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, who first loved us, for choosing us to be your children, to invite us and to uh, have us not only live in your kingdom, but have the armor of God to battle against the enemies in this world. In this world, Lord, battle is severe, and so therefore we need all the prayer that we can get. Help us not to be greedy and selfish with our prayer by asking what we want, what we need. But let us be concerned, Father God, for people of God. Help us to look around to see who needs prayer and who needs your help and lift them in our prayer, Lord. And when we start our prayer, Father God, help us to give you thanks and to remind you of all the promises that you have kept in our own life. And then help us to lift others to you in our request. And lastly, to lift our needs and our desires unto you because you delight in that order of prayer when Solomon prayed and you have given him so much more than just wisdom, but wealth and honor. Let us exemplify and imitate Solomon, but let us always look to your son, Jesus Christ, who is our perfect and holy, great, awesome God who meets our need and our wants. Thank you for reminding us how to pray, what to pray. And thank you for reminding us how delighted you are with us in all that we do. Again, thank you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for the Lord's Prayer. Ready, begin. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.